Welcome to our lesson on using a binomial expansion with negative and fractional powers. So in this lesson, we're going to expand each of these expressions from questions A to D using this expansion here. And then we're going to state the range of X for which the expansion is true. So we'll begin with question A. Now we have the square root of one minus two X, but we know that the square root is equivalent to raising to a power of a half. So we can write this as 1 minus 2x to the power of a half. So now we know that n, this n here, is equal to a half. And we know the x term maps on to negative 2x. So now we can substitute these two values into our expansion. So we have 1 plus n, which is a half multiply by x term, which is negative 2x. Moving on to our quadratic, we have n, and then n minus one, so minus one half. And now we're squaring the x term, and we're dividing it by two factorial, which is just two. For our cubic term, we have again n, n minus one, and n minus two. And we're cubing the x term, so cube of negative two x, divided by three factorial, which we'll write as three times two. So now we're going to tighten this up. We know we have the one, and then the half of a negative two is negative one, so we have minus x. And then for our quadratic term, we have a negative two squared, which gives us positive four. And this negative quarter will cancel with this four to make a negative term. And then we have the x squared over two. For our cubic term, we have an eighth, which is made up of these three halves. And we know we have negative two cubed, which is negative eight. So these will cancel to make negative one. We know the three will cancel with this three. And these two negatives will cancel to make a positive. So we're left with minus x cubed over two. So this is our expansion for the square root of one minus two x. Now the range of which it is valid is when the modulus of x is less than one. But our x term is negative two x. So the modulus of two x is less than one. We'll divide both by two. So the modulus of x is less than one half. So the question B, we have one over one plus x but we need to write it in this form here. So we need to write it with a power, but we know this is a reciprocal of one plus x. So we can write it as one plus x to a power of negative one, when this negative means one over. So now we know that n is negative one and x maps on to x. So now we can substitute these two values into our formula. So we have one plus n, which is negative one, and the x term for our quadratic, again, we have n, n minus one, and then the x term squared over two. And for our cubic, we have negative one, negative two, negative three, and x cubed over three factorial, which is three times two. So now we can tidy this up. We have one, this becomes negative x. We can see the two will cancel with this two. The two negatives will make a positive. So we have positive x squared. And then the three will cancel with the three. The two will cancel with the two. So we're left with negative one x cubed to minus x cubed. I mean, of a range of which is valid is when the modulus of the x term, 
So our modulus of x is less than 1. Okay, let's move on to question C and D. So in question C, we have the square root of 9 plus 3x. But we know the square root can be written as a power of a half. So we have 9 plus 3x to the power of 1 half. But here we have in the formula 1 plus x. So we need to make this 9 into a 1. So we're going to factorise out the 9. So we have 9 and then we can have 9 times 1 to make the 9. And then we'll take out the 9 from a 3x term. So we're left with 1 third of x. And this is raised to a power of a half. But now we need to remember to expand out the power of a half. So we have 9 to the half and 1 plus x over 3 to the half. And we know 9 to the half is 3. So our n term is a power of a half and our x term maps on to x over 3. And now we can substitute these two values into the expression. And we need to remember that we're multiplying all of this expression by the 3. So we'll put this on the outside of our brackets. So now I'm going to tidy this up. We know we have 3 lots of the 1. And then a half times x over 3 will make x over 6. The square term will simplify to make negative x squared over 72. And the cubic term simplifies to make positive x cubed over 432. So we'll expand these brackets out and we get 3 plus x over 2 minus x squared over 24 plus x cubed over 144. So the range of values for which this is valid is when the modulus of our x term which is x over 3 is less than 1 so we'll multiply both sides by 3, so we have a modulus of x less than 3. Okay, let's move on to question D. So for question D, to write it as a single power, well, we know it's 1 over, so we have a negative power. So 3 plus x to the negative, and because we're squaring it, we're going to have it to the negative 2. But now we need to take out the 3. So we've got 3 lots of 1, plus x over 3 and this is raised to a negative 2. So now we need to multiply out the negative 2. So we have 3 to the negative 2 which is 1 ninth and it is 1 ninth of 1 plus x over 3 to that power. So we know that n is negative 2 and x maps on to x over 3. And now we can substitute these two values into our formula. So now we can tidy this up. And we get 1 minus 2x over 3 plus x squared over 3 minus 4x cubed over 27. But we need to remember that all of this is multiplied by this ninth here. So we'll put all of this in brackets. And we'll expand out the ninth. So finally, we have 1 ninth minus 2x over 27 plus x squared over 27 minus 4x cubed over 243. The range of values for which it is valid is when the modulus of our x term, x over 3, is less than 1. So a modulus of x must be less than 3. Okay, thank you very much for watching and I hope you found that useful. Thanks again and take care.